All right, our next section is section 1.4 from the textbook, and it's on continuity and one-sided limits. We're going to talk about things that are continuous today. Here's some of the objectives from this section. Determine continuity at a point and continuity on an open interval. Determine one-sided limits and continuity on a closed interval. We're going to use properties of continuity. And then finally, we're going to understand and use something called the intermediate value theorem. All right, the first kind of topic in here is continuity at a point and on an open interval. So we're just going to discuss what, what it means for something to be continuous in mathematics. Um, the term continuous has very much the same, same meaning in math as it does in, in everyday life that we use. And so in math, we, we often talk about things being continuous or not continu continuous. Um, and it says informally to say that a function f is continuous at x equals c means there's no interruption in the graph. It just means that it, it keeps going. There's no holes, there's no jumps in it or breaks, and there's no gaps between them. And we'll show some good examples here of what it means to be continuous or not continuous. All right, so the figures below give us three different ways in which the graph can cannot be continuous. All right, and so the first one here is is where we have a hole in the graph. You have the function at this value, this x value c. So this is f of c here. And f of c is not defined. We have an open circle. The second one is where we have kind of a break or a jump in the graph. And so it's defined up here at f of c exists, but the limit doesn't exist because we're approaching from two different sides. And so this is not a continuous graph. It has a, a different limit. The third thing is where we, we have f of c existing. You can see this black dot down here, this darkened in circle. But it's not continuous because we have a break in the graph. We have an open circle. And then we have to make this leap down to f of c. And then the graph continues on the other side. So even though the limit is defined, f of c is not defined. And so those are three cases. And it says it appears that continuity at a certain value, c, can get destroyed or, or broken by any of those three conditions. So the first one was that first graph where we have a, a hole, just a hole in the graph. The second one was where it makes that leap. The, the limit doesn't exist. And then the third one is the limit exists, but it's not equal to f of c. And so if none of these three conditions is true, then the function is continuous. So we're kind of defining continuity based on what it is not, as it says in the next next slide. So for a function to be continuous at C, if all three of these conditions are met, one is the function it has to be defined at that spot. Uh, the limit has to exist. It has to approach the same number from both sides. And the limit has is kind of the third one is kind of the combination of these two. The limit exists, and f of C is defined. And then the limit is actually equal to f of C. And so basically, all that is saying is that we have a continuous line, something like this. There's no, there's no open circles. Everything is, is filled in. And so when we're talking about an open interval, it says a function is continuous on an open interval from A to B. So A is the, the low end, B is the high end, if it is continuous at each point in the interval. A function that is continuous on the entire real line from negative infinity to positive infinity, so for all real numbers, is everywhere continuous. All right, consider an open interval L that contains a real number C. If a function f is defined on L except possibly at C, and f is not continuous at C, then f is said to have a discontinuity at C. So we're going to talk about what it means for something to have a discontinuity. It's a break in the graph. Discontinuities, discontinuities fall into two categories. So we have two different categories of these discontinuities. One is removable, and the other is non-removable. Um, a discontinuity is removable if I can make the graph continuous by just filling in or appropriately defining f of c. So here's a, here's a picture of that. So both A, figure A here, and figure C have re removable discontinuities. And all that means is if I come and I fill in this one spot along this curve here, then all of a sudden I have a continuous graph, right? I can trace it, and I have no breaks. You can see in figure B, I have a non-removable continuity because even if I fill in this open spot here, then all of a sudden it's defined in two spots, and I still can't, 
I can't I still have to make a leap in order to finish the graph so in order for it to be a a uh, removable discontinuity I can fill it in and then make a complete complete sweep of the graph without lifting my my pen all right so here's a couple of examples before we we finish with this section you've got four different examples and we'll go through each one All right, so the domain of the first graph, 1 over x, so here's the graph of 1 over x. You can see it does this in quadrant 1, and over here we've got quadrant 2. It says from theorem 1.3, you can conclude, so this is, this is a function that's not defined at, at 0, right? When x is 0, this function is undefined, so I have a discontinuity at 0. Um, from theorem 1.3, you can conclude that f is continuous at every x value in the domain. So as long as I'm in the domain, so in quadrant one here, it's continuous. Over here, it's going to do this, and there's no breaks. But overall, at x equals zero here, I have a non-removable discontinuity, and that's because on this left side in quadrant three here, it tends toward negative infinity without bound, and as soon as I'm back in quadrant one, or as soon as x is slightly bigger than zero, it goes this way. And so here at, at x equals zero, I have a non-removable discontinuity. There's no way to make these two ends connect by filling in one spot. So this would be not continuous, and it would have a non-removable discontinuity at x equals 0. All right. The second one, bring up the graph here. The second one, x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. You can see we have a, a gap here at, at when x is equal to 1, right? The, the denominator of the fraction is going to equal 0. When x equals 1, I get a, a 0 out of here. And so I'm going to have a break there. It's not defined there. But you can see that is a removable discontinuity because it's just that one spot. If I somehow, like if we use our... our uh, our dividing out technique, I could factor this, and then I'd get something that looks like, like that. And so this is a continuous everywhere at every x value in its domain, again. And the number 1, when x equals 1, is not part of the domain. But at x equals 1, there's a removable discontinuity. So just that one dot, if I put it back in, I have a continuous graph. And so it says if g of 1 is defined as equal to 2, like if we divide it out, then the newly defined function, so if I make it look like this, then it's continuous for all real numbers. And that idea is, is very similar to what we did in section 3 of rewriting it so that we can define the limit. All right, the third one here, you've got a piecewise function. If x is less than or equal to 0, we're going to use x plus 1. If x is greater than 0, we're going to use x squared plus 1. So here you can see continuous, 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 and we're looking everywhere in the domain for every x value, is, this function is defined. If it's equal to 0, I get 1, and if it's less than 0, I'm going to do uh, x plus 1, and over here I got x squared plus 1, and it says the domain of h is all real numbers, so everything works, and the function h is continuous from negative infinity to 0, and from 0 to infinity, and because the limit of h of x when x approaches 0, is equal to 1, it's defined at 0. H is continuous for everywhere. So again, guys, you see no open gaps here. That tells us that this is continuous on the entire real number line. And the final one, this is just a sine curve, sine of x. And you guys know that sine functions, trig functions, are periodic. Sine and cosine are continuous. There's no breaks in the function. Every, every x value, or in both the positive x direction or the negative x direction are part of the domain. So the domain here is all real numbers or from negative infinity to positive infinity. And this function is continuous everywhere on that real line. It would just keep going like that and like that to the left. And so this is continuous everywhere.